how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. We're in spring now, and pastels are always a default for spring, and I thought it could be fun this season for me to rank all of my pastel palettes, because I have quite a lot, and I wanted to kind of see which ones I like the best, why do I like some more than others, what is my perfect ultimate pastel palette? We're about to find out. Before we hop into this pastel palette ranking, I did of course film this look. It should already be up on my Instagram and YouTube shorts by the time this video goes up. As far as my accessories go, this is just an old basic choker. I don't know where it's from. And these earrings are Spooky Doodle Club. So yeah, without further ado, let's just hop in and rank all of these pastel palettes. So now I'm specifically going to be ranking the palettes that are marketed from brands as pastel palettes. And I'm really trying to channel that kind of you know, in your face, going on that rainbow pastel kind of color scheme. That's what I'm gonna be focusing on. For instance, Blend Bunny came out with their version of a pastel palette last fall, but they also have pastels mixed in their other palettes. I'm not gonna be talking about those. I'm just gonna be talking about the one that they marketed as a pastel palette, if that makes sense. And I don't own every pastel palette that has ever come out. I just simply don't own everything. These are just the 12 that I have that I deem fit for this specific ranking category. If you think I'm forgetting something, I simply might just not own it and you're mistaken, my friend. But we're gonna get into it. This was really difficult because really I love all of these. Only the very last one I feel like I kind of have gripes with, but everything else I really, really enjoy. So even the things ranked like 11, 10, 9, 8, even though they're lower on the ranking, I still really enjoy them. I have no intention on decluttering them at the end of the year. Um, we'll see about the one that's ranked number 12, but everything else I'm really, really happy with. This is just a way for me to kind of share with you why I like some things more than others and which ones are my ultimate favorite. Number 12 is actually my newest one. This is the Dream Gaze by Alter Ego. This is supposed to be a dupe for the Natasha Denona pastel palette and I just feel like this is pretty lackluster. While I was using it I almost found myself getting kind of bored. I just felt like things were a little more sheer than I would like. The shimmers are pretty but the mattes and of course that cream matte formula that I really don't like from Alter Ego. Um, it just, it, it wasn't wowing me. It's not my favorite one I've used. It's not horrible. It's a good price point, especially if you're looking for like a dupe of a Natasha Denona palette, but Overall, this is just not my favorite pastel palette out of all the ones that I have. And by the way, I do have looks with all of these palettes, whether it be on Instagram, YouTube, both. You can just search my channel if you need to see some inspo and see these in action. All right, moving on to number 11. And this is where it starts to pain me because I don't even want this palette in number 11 spot because I really love this palette. I have no intention on getting rid of it, but everything else I do just like a little bit more at this point, but this palette holds so many memories for me and I still cherish it dearly. It's the Nomad Cosmetics Tokyo Harajuku. This is just so cute. This was my first Nomad palette ever. This one feels like such a throwback to hold and to talk about. It's so cute. We have a row of mattes on the top. We have a row of satins in the middle and we have these beautiful shifty like iridescent shifty shadows on the bottom. I feel like these shadows were well before their time because we see shadows like this all the time now and it wasn't really a thing when this palette first came out. So it's just so cool to see. But the main reason I ranked this one as low as I did is just because I really don't care for satin shadows. It's just not my formula preference. And since a third of the palette is a formula that's just not my favorite thing. Like give me a matte, give me a shimmer. I don't really like satin. Um, that's why I had to rank this one lower just because everything else has formulas that I like universally. Whereas this one just has things that just aren't for me. Um, but overall, this is still a really fun one to play with. It's so cutesy. I know at one point, I think they put that this was getting discontinued. I don't know if it's still available. Anything that I can, I'll link down below as well as any discount codes if I have any. But this was such a fun one. This is a relic in my collection. Like definitely one of my oldest palettes and it's so cute and I cherish it dearly. It's just not my favorite compared to my other pastels at this point. Next up, ranked number 10, I'm giving to my Give Me Glow Pastel Dreams. Now this one is super, super cute. It's so pretty. This is gonna be your kind of easy breezy pastel palette because we have an equal like matte to shimmer ratio. We have the matching matte and shimmer shade in the pastel color. So it's gonna be very easy breezy as far as just your basic rainbow palette. Love Give Me Glow's formulas. I think the mattes are very pigmented and very easy to blend. They're just so creamy and blendable. I love it. And then the shimmers are just so metallic and saturated on the lids. They are gorgeous. And I, I honestly didn't expect this one to be ranked number 10. I thought this would be ranked higher, but 
as I was deciding my order for this video, I just decided that this one is such a like kind of basic pastel rainbow palette. Everything else I feel like has a little more pizzazz to it. So that's why I ranked everything else just slightly more. Um, but again, I really like it. The only palette in this video I really have qualms with is number 12, um, cause this is also beautiful to work with. I think it's so gorgeous. I really like uh, the pink and the peach as blushes as well. They're so freaking cute. Next up, ranked number nine, I'm giving to my Spring Dragon palette. This is the latest collaboration between Judy and Odin's Eye. I honestly love that she came out with not only like a spring version of the Red Dragon palette she did last collaboration, we have kind of the Red Dragon and now the Spring Dragon, but I also love that we got kind of a pastel palette from Odin's Eye, because this is very different for the brand. I feel like this one stands out. It's really beautiful. It's really cohesive. Um, I love all these mattes and I love all the shimmers that are mixed in. Love Odin's Eye's formula. I think Judy did such a great job with just this entire palette. Um, the only reason I didn't rank this one higher is just because everything else either holds more sentiment to me or the overall color story I just jive with more. This one does have a couple neutrals, which isn't my personal go-to when it comes to pastels. Like those are just shades I'm never gonna touch really. I mean, it's it's a pretty like wet champagne-y shade. I'm not really mad at that one, but I didn't need the brown personally. Um, and I know that's so gripey. And that's so nitpicky, but when it comes to videos like this where I love everything, I really do have to get picky about even one specific shade to help myself form an order of preference. And that's just where this one landed. I think this one's beautiful. I think it's gorgeous. Judy did a great job. Um, if you love Odin's Eye and you're looking for a pastel palette, this is your one. This is your palette. Moving on now to number eight, I'm giving it to my Sugar Pill fun size palette. This is so cute. This is another like throwback classic. I feel like this is one of my go-to palettes if I'm going to do like throwback makeup because it's been in my collection for 5,000 years. Um, but I love this little guy. I always classified this as kind of like a pastel neon palette because if you just go in with like your normal application, it's going to be a little more pastel-y. But if you take the time to really build these up, they have a lot of impact, a lot of pigment, very neon energy. So it can kind of go either way, pastel to neon, but I've always still lumped this with my pastel palettes because upon initial application, I feel like it does lean more pastel. Super cute, just classic mattes. Again, we have kind of rainbow energy, but this is like rainbow with a twist. It's not just like basic rainbow. Um, it's gorgeous, it's fun. I don't think this one exists anymore, unfortunately, but this was a classic one. It's adorable, it holds a lot of Fond memories for me. I've always enjoyed this formula. I've gotten so much use out of it, so I had no choice but to like rank it as high as I could, but the other seven things I do prefer a little bit more. Moving on now to number seven is actually gonna be my Sugar Pill Fun Size 2. This was kind of the sequel. I just love the little boba. Um, the sequel to the original Fun Size. And again, I consider this also kind of like pastel, grungy neon almost, because it's like, Still kind of in that pastel neon with the application, but this has a little bit more of a grungier edge to it. Like I love the swampy shades. This is like my entire heart right there. I love these different peaches. I love this really vibrant kind of emerald. I love the indigo. It's just such a cool palette. I like this one so much more than the original fun size just because I love the uniqueness with these shades. They're all so funky and so cool. This one I do remember was available longer than the original fun size. Don't know if it still is. Of course, I'll have it linked down below if it is. I really hope it is because it's so cute. Again, the formula is beautiful to work with and I've always had just so much fun playing with both of these. Honestly, I could lump these together as just like the same place, but if I had to like pick an order, it would be this one over that one. Um, they're just so cute and I just, I have so many fond memories of them. I love them. Moving on now to number six. We're going now into the top half of this video. It's gonna be my Glaminatrix Pretty in Pastels. This one's fairly new in my collection as well. Glaminatrix just launched this recently and it's super, super pretty. I really like how they did this pastel palette. I like that we have the two rows of shimmers, the two rows of pastels, and then we have a row of deepening shades at the bottom. I have found that I personally thrive if a pastel palette has deepening shades and not like necessarily just a black because black isn't really gonna give you depth because black and pastel mixed together just gives you gray um, just because of how white based pastels are. But to give me like deeper, jewel toned versions of the pastel colors in a palette. It just takes it up another notch for me. I have so many more 
options, so many more things I can do. I love having depth with pastels. I mean, it's kind of what I did today. Like I have a very smoky, grungified pastel purple going on and I just love it. The shimmers in here are so pretty. They're so reflective. They're so gorgeous. I've had a really good time with this one. I had no trouble working with the mattes. I think they all blended really beautifully and I just love the effect of the shimmers. This was a really fun one, but the top five were just truly unbeatable. Like I knew what the top five were before I even gathered my palettes. I just, I just knew. So this one wasn't gonna come to those, but I am really fond of this one. I've enjoyed playing with it. I've really enjoyed the looks I've created. Moving on now to number five, and really numbers four and five could kind of be tied together. So I'll just kind of talk about them at the same time. Ranked fourth and fifth place are my Shroud Cosmetics Creepy Cute and Creepy Cute 2 palettes. And again, I've mentioned a few times, um, I know that Shroud was like, on a hiatus for a while, she kind of ghosted. Apparently she's gotten back to people who had outstanding orders saying that those are gonna get sent out as soon as possible. Um, but I still don't really know any background information. I don't know if Shroud's site is like somewhere to shop at the moment. I don't know like what the inventory is like or what her process is or if she's doing okay. Um, but I still have these in my collection and for the sake of this ranking video, these are still some of my favorites. I really hope the brand ends up getting it together and she ends up being able to just be thriving and doing her thing again. But at the moment, I'm just unsure what's going on. But the Creepy Cute and Creepy Cute 2, this was my first pastel palette ever, I believe. I think I actually might have had this before the Tokyo Harajuku, but just classic old school indie makeup pastels. This is so beautiful. I've loved this forever. This is actually a newer one. I got a newer one when the Creepy Cute 2 launched because my first one was old. It was so used, so abused, and I'm so happy to have a fresh one. Um, Strawberry Milk will forever be such a cute blush. I just love these colors. And even though I just said I don't really need a black in a pastel palette because it doesn't really give you, like you can't mix a black with a pastel purple and expect a dark purple. It doesn't work like that. It just turns gray. But I love the black shadow in this palette. It's so dark and so just rich. It's such a good black. If you know how to use black and pastels together, it can be done really well. You just can't go into it expecting it to darken up existing pastels. But this is just such a classic. I love this one so much. And then of course the sequel, Creepy Cute 2. This came out maybe a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. I don't even know when this came out anymore, um, but it's so cute. It's just kind of like the the spooky, weird alien sister to Creepy Cute. Like we still have fun kind of pastel-y shades, but with lots of different twists and turns to them. Like the shades that are similar in this one to that one are like different. Like we have different shades of green, different pink, a different purple. We have a vibrant yellow, which I love. This is just so cool. I love both of these together. I hold them so near and dear to my heart. Moving on now to the top three. I knew without a shadow of a doubt what my top three would be. I mean, I know for a long time, Creepy Cute was my number one favorite, but with all the pastel palettes that have released, I have found my top three favorites. And I have really found that as much as I love just true pastels, I love the depth with the pastel palette, but I also love shimmers with a pastel palette. I love having that mixture. I want more than just mattes, that's just me. I love having some shimmer in the mix. And my number three pick is gonna be my Pastel Garden from Bella Beauty Bar. This is a monster of a palette. It's so ginormous. But if you need your one-stop shop, for everything pastel, this is a really great one. You're not gonna get depth with this one, but you are gonna get every undertone of every color in pastel form, a mixture of mattes and shimmers. The mattes are so buttery and pigmented and the shimmers are so just shifty and special and reflective. And this is just so, so, so gorgeous. I'm not usually fond of this many shades in a palette. Like this is a table. This is literally an end table, <laughs> but I feel like it was done really well. I like seeing so many different kinds of colors and undertones. I feel like even though there's as many shades as there are, there aren't really repeats. It was done really well and I'm really, really happy with it. Moving on now to number two, I decided to give it to my Cosmic Brushes, Delicious Delights. This came out last springtime and I love her. She's adorable. This is such a fun one. I feel like this is again, a really good representation of like, Lots of pastels and vibrant shades, but we have a couple like jewel tones in the mix. It's not super depthy. You're not gonna get a lot of darkness with this palette by any means, but we do have some richness in here to really add some dimension to your looks. And the shimmers in here are outstanding. They're so just rich and metallic. We have some really pretty multi-chromes in here as well. I think this one is so fun. It's just vibrant and creative. And I love that it's like, 
pastels and colors without it just being traditional rainbow. We have, again, just some weirdness to it, which I really, really enjoy. I love Cosmic Brushes formulas, and this is definitely one of my top favorite pastel palettes. And of course, ranked number one, drum roll please. It's my Blend Bunny, Sickly Sweet. I feel like we all knew this was coming. This one's just so good. She launched this, I believe, last October, if I'm not mistaken, which I feel like was such a random time to launch a pastel palette, but also so cool. I like that it's kind of like spooky pastels. Like, that's just so fun. I feel like nobody talks about pastels in the fall, and it's nice to have some change up because I love wearing weirdness out of season, but it's just so gorgeous. This was also Blend Bunny's first time doing like a mixture of shades instead of the normal gradient order, which I honestly really like this. I like how it's chaotic. I like that it's weird and mismatched. We have lots of depth in here. Again, so many pastels. It's riddled with pastels, but we have those pops of depth to really add dimension and grunginess to your looks. The shimmers in here are so pretty. This is just everything that I want in a pastel palette. We have every pastel shade, lots of different undertones. We have shimmers that are so beautiful and we have the depth. It's just everything that I need. I love Blend Bunny's formulas with my entire being. And when she came out with her version of the pastel palette, I was so excited. I think this is absolutely amazing. And I am proud to rank this one number one out of all my pastel palettes. But I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you have any of these palettes? Do you want any of them? How many pastel palettes do you have in your collection? And what are your favorites? If you made it to the end of this video, why don't you leave me some pastel colored emojis? And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. And if you're not already, you can follow me over on Instagram. I'm Batty Bean there as well. And you can subscribe if you would like. I post most days over here. You can also join my channel memberships. Link to sign up will be down below. You'll get fun little perks, including a members only video once a month. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.